Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Shreya Savijay. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 18th of June. India's Interior Minister reviews COVID-19 situation in Delhi NCR amid rising cases. COVID-19 cases surge despite partial lockdown in Pakistan. And Sri Lankan President assures free and fair general elections amid pandemic. And now for all the details. India's Interior Minister Amit Shah on Thursday held a meeting with officials from New Delhi and National Capital Region to discuss the COVID-19 situation amid a huge spike in cases. India's coronavirus cases tally reached to 366,946 on Thursday with over 12,000 deaths. India's Interior Minister Amit Shah on Thursday reviewed the coronavirus situation in Delhi and the National Capital Region or NCR amid increasing number of COVID-19 cases. Shah reviewed the steps taken to check the spread of the deadly virus, the movement of people between Delhi and NCR which comprises districts of Haryana, Uttar Pradesh and Rajasthan provinces was also discussed in the meeting, reports suggested. Meanwhile, Health Minister Dr. Harshwardhan launched India's first mobile lab for COVID-19 testing to promote testing access in rural areas. The Infectious Disease Diag Lab or iLab is supported by the Department of Biotechnology under the COVID Command Strategy. The mobile lab will be deployed in the interior, inaccessible parts of India. This is a compact and broad suvidhaunse. हर तरीके से जिसे कहते हैं सुसज्जित ये लैबोरेटरी है और इसको अभी आज हम लोग देश को समर्पित कर रहे हैं इस प्रोसेस को स्केल अप करेंगे लोगों को कैसे इसकी उपयोगिता बढ़े इसके ऊपर समय के साथ गहरा विश्लेषण भी किया जाएगा India's coronavirus cases tally reached 366,946 on Thursday with over 12,000 deaths. The country has now changed its virus testing protocols, making them faster and cheaper. Authorities have also increased supply of testing kits to capital New Delhi, one of the worst affected regions due to the outbreak. India on Thursday held funerals for some of the 20 soldiers killed in violent border face-off with Chinese troops earlier this week as the nuclear armed rivals sought to defuse tensions. India held funerals on Thursday for some of the 20 soldiers killed in brutal hand-to-hand -hand fighting with Chinese troops in a disputed mountainous border region as the two governments sought to de-escalate tensions. Dozens of people lined the streets in Surapet town in southern Telangana province as the body of Army Colonel B. Santosh Babu, wrapped in the Indian flag, was brought home and taken for last rites. Funerals of other soldiers also took place in their hometowns and villages. Indian Foreign Minister S. Jashankar on Wednesday spoke to his Chinese counterpart Wang Yi over phone and the two sides agreed not to take any steps to escalate matters but both blamed each other for the deadliest border clash since 1967 and said they must rein in their troops. The killings of the country, our 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 Mr. 
Meanwhile, protests continued across India as tensions remained high three days after the clashes in Galwan Valley in mountainous region of Ladakh, in which India said China had also suffered casualties. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday said the sacrifice of Indian soldiers will not go in vain and warned a befitting reply. Hardline nationalist groups have stepped up calls for a boycott of Chinese goods and cancellation of contracts with Chinese firms. Moving on, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday said he is deeply grateful for the overwhelming support shown by the global community for India's membership of the UN Security Council. India was elected unopposed on Wednesday to win the election for the non-permanent seat in the powerful Security Council. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday said on Twitter that he was deeply grateful for the overwhelming support shown by the global community for India's membership of the UN Security Council and said India will work with all member countries to promote global peace, security, resilience and equity. India garnered 184 votes out of the 192 ballots cast in the General Assembly to win the election for the non-permanent seat in the powerful Security Council on Wednesday. To ensure geographical representation, seats are allocated to regional groups. India's two-year term will begin on January 1, 2021. We will be working with member states of the United Nations in our collective endeavour to promote responsible and inclusive solutions to international peace and security. And we also want to promote a very strong but reformed multilateral system, which will also be befitting the uh, 75th anniversary of the founding of the United Nations, which we will be celebrating this year. The Security Council is the only UN body that can make legally binding decisions like imposing sanctions and authorizing the use of force. It has five permanent veto-wielding members, the United States, Britain, France, China and Russia. In news from Pakistan, the number of coronavirus cases in Pakistan on Thursday reached 160,118 with at least 3,063 deaths reported so far. The virus cases have increased manifold in the country since the government eased a lockdown in the second week of May after a partial shutdown of about two months. Alarmed by the rising infections cases, the authorities have again started shutting down residential localities in big cities like Lahore and capital Islamabad. Pakistan on Thursday reported 160,118 cases of the novel coronavirus and 3,093 associated deaths. The rate of daily COVID-19 cases has been rising fast in the country of 207 million, a point noted by the World Health Organization in a letter to Pakistani authorities last week. Citing the outbreak, Pakistan has sealed off parts of its densely populated Lahore city for the next two weeks after authorities said they will reimpose strict lockdowns in selected areas of several cities amid the coronavirus outbreak. ये बीमारी इतनी तेजी से फैल रही है ना इसको कंट्रोल करने के लिए लॉकडाउन का होना बड़ा जरूरी है और लोगों में इतना अवेयरनेस नहीं है लोगों को नहीं शौक वैसे ही देखें चलते फिर अभी अब देखिए कितने लोगों ने मास्क लगाया और नहीं लगाया मीनवाइल पार्ट्स ऑफ पाकिस्तान कैपिटल इस्लामाबाद एज वेल एज पेशावर आर विटनेसिंग सिमिलर मेजर्स एंड फोर्स ऑफिशियल सेड विद मोर सिटीज एक्सपेक्टेड टू फॉलो सूट the South Asian country lifted its countrywide lockdown on May 9, citing economic stress and has since seen infection rates rise. Afghanistan remained the world's deadliest conflict for children last year, the United Nations has said in a report released this week. The report says that 874 children were killed by the war throughout 2019. The United Nations in a report released this week has said the war in Afghanistan was the world's deadliest conflict for children last year, a status the country has held for five consecutive years. 
The UN report says that 874 children were killed by the war throughout 2019. It adds that these numbers were among the 3,410 young Afghans who suffered from grave violations which included maiming, abduction, sexual abuse and attacks at schools and hospitals. In the report, militant group Taliban has been blamed for causing over 1,238 child deaths and injuries, the largest number attributed to any single group. Meanwhile, the report has attributed just under a third of the child deaths and injuries documented to pro-government forces, including 248 that were attributed to international forces. This comes as a new report by the Afghanistan Statistics and Information Authority says that from an estimated 32.9 million population in the country, 15.3 million are under 15 years of age. Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajapaksa on Thursday held a meeting with the chairman and members of the election commission and assured free and fair general elections under strict health guidelines. The island nation is set to hold parliamentary elections on 5th of August after previously postponing the poll two times due to coronavirus spread. Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajapaksa on Thursday met the chairman and members of the election commission and assured to create the background to hold a free and fair election while giving priority to the health protection of the people amid the coronavirus pandemic. Sri Lanka's election commission last week set the country's parliamentary election date for August 5, after previously postponing the poll due to spread of the novel coronavirus. The original date was April 26, which had been postponed to June 20, before last week's move. The commission had waited for the Supreme Court to reject half a dozen petitions requesting that the elections not take place until the virus was under control. Election officials tested out voting procedures earlier this month using measures such as protective gear, social distancing and disposable pens. The election commission has said the cost for the election will be 50% higher because of the precautions. The government has lifted most of the restrictions imposed to control the virus spread in Sri Lanka. The country has had 1,924 confirmed cases and 11 deaths so far. Usually packed with thousands of worshippers, Nepal's famous Pashupatinath temple remains deserted as all religious places remain closed for public amid nationwide coronavirus lockdown. Income of the highest earning iconic temple has been worsely affected. As Nepal's government has closed all religious places around the country for indefinite time amid the coronavirus outbreak, income of the famous Pashupatinath temple has been worsely affected. The iconic temple, which stands as highest earning temple in Nepal, is closed for general public for over two months now. Figures released by the Temples Trust suggest they are losing over 4,084 US dollars on daily basis due to the pandemic and the lockdown imposed to control it. <laughs> Temple authorities have closed the major entrance of the temple and the evening time prayers are being held by priests alone. The temple used to be packed with devotees and worshippers during the evening prayers daily before the coronavirus lockdown. Nepal has so far reported 7,177 cases of coronavirus with 20 associated deaths. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
सब्सक्राइब टैग टीवी यूट्यूब चैनल एंड प्रेस द नोटिफिकेशन बटन